time for your favorite show once again and we are excited to let you know that we are just about to begin hosting investment forums across the world in collaboration with our partners and these forums will come under the brand Daring Abroad Investment Forums. It takes the brand to another level and we will be beginning in Australia from the month of March. That's just around the corner and let's get a feel of what to expect in Australia. Many people here want to invest. All eyes on Australia ahead of the Daring Abroad Investment Forums in collaboration with the Kenya-Australia Chamber of Commerce and the regional Kenyan diaspora associations. Karibuni, welcome to Australia, Victoria and Melbourne. We are ready for you. Perth during the first weekend of March, Adelaide second weekend and Melbourne third weekend. Our job is advocating for business uh, opportunities for both Australia and Kenya. With the Kenyan High Commission in Australia and the Kenyan National Chamber of Commerce and Industry on board. The leading source of foreign income and currency is actually diaspora remittances. Great. Let's go straight into what to expect in Australia as we host daring abroad investment forums in three cities. Daring Abroad Investment Forums are coming in a style never done before, with the objective of promoting trade between Kenya and Australia. We aim to explore untapped investment opportunities between Kenya and host countries and boost diaspora investments home and abroad. Kenya Australia Chamber of Commerce is our key partner for the Australia chapter of the forums. Kenya Australia Chamber of Commerce is a, a most prominent organization between the two countries when it comes to Australia and Kenyan business. We established about nine years ago and since then we have had about uh, 20 to uh, 25 missions including member parliaments. I think the last uh, dispensation of the government is only the president and uh, uh, the vice president within host in Australia. Our job is advocating for business uh, opportunities for both Australia and both in Kenya. We also do promotions for business and also do trade missions and trade tours. Australia has a very vibrant Kenyan community, eager to invest both home and abroad. The forums are expected to give them an opportunity to interact with the Kenyan delegation and sponsors from both the public and private sectors who are set to showcase their products and services. In the community here are come to Australia largely as skilled migrants. They are professionals, mostly in various sectors, from healthcare to ICT to banking like myself. So we find that we are a demographic that is mostly working professionals and entrepreneurs. And uh, we are in. We cover all. We are. You'll find us in every sector of the economy, and hence uh, we are big contributors of uh, the economic day-to-day uh, uh, -day life of here in Australia. Kenyans in Western Australia tend to work in the mining industry, hospitality, aged care, and disability. We've got Kenyans that are accountants, leaders in their fields in terms of uh, running businesses, executive in the mining industry. So. If you're looking for miners, this the place to go is Western Australia because Western Australia is actually the biggest in terms of mining in Australia. Many people here want to invest, but one of the fears that they usually have is being conned. So the expectation is coming with a brand as huge as Daring Abroad and the Champs Media. It is a trusted brand. So my expectation is that the business that tag along with this delegation are businesses that are legit, businesses that people can believe in, and businesses that when they invest, they will not say, Casa told us to invest in these businesses and we burnt our money. A delegation from the Kenyan National Chamber of Commerce and Industry will be attending the forums in the three cities. Australia is a very important uh, continent for us uh, as Africa, especially when we are looking at the African Free Continental uh, Trade Area. We know 
most of the diaspora Kenyans have gone to Australia through education. And uh, quite a number of them who've been there for maybe 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, have become business people. And we are already in contact with the diaspora Kenyans who are in business. We shall be visiting their businesses, whether they are in uh, trading, uh, there are those ones who are in uh, agriculture, there are those ones who are in manufacturing. In fact, we've secured uh, quite a number of those ones who are in agriculture, they are doing large-scale farming. They are also doing large-scale greenhouse farming and they are doing large-scale uh, packaging and agri-processing. Australia and Kenya enjoy cordial trade and diplomatic ties. Australia maintains a high commission in Nairobi and Kenya is represented in Australia by a high commission in Canberra. I hear most Kenyans complain that this, we don't export much to Australia. Uh, but now as the president has been going around, Australia population have basically increased. We are sending a lot of students to Australia. On the other hand, Australia sent cars here. I think majority of consumption we have seen in uh, 2021 statistics and also wheat uh, that is coming across. But most importantly, and what is critical now, as we have seen going forward, the clean energy uh, and renewable have been very, Australia is very big in Kenya at this moment. As a country, as a Kenya, uh, one of the opportunities that we shall be looking for is to attract foreign direct investment and exchange in technology. We know Australia are very good, especially in large-scale farming, in dairy. Uh, they know they are world leaders in dairy and uh, beef. We want to learn how they are doing. We know as a country, Kenya here, we, our sector in uh, data and livestock is one of the most developed in Africa. So we want to see how Australia has been able to occupy the global market and see how we can be able to share best practices, do joint ventures with Australian companies who are interested to expand uh, to Africa uh, so that uh, Kenya becomes the hub and the entry hub for Africa for uh, modern technology from Australia. In each of the three cities, the Daring Abroad Investment Forums will take this format. Friday afternoon will be for preparations and networking among the sponsors and hosts. Saturday will be the real business day with B2B meetings, panel discussions and exhibitions, while Sunday will be the family and culture day. The culture day is a coming together of uh, various uh, Kenyan communities from uh, the Mulembe Nation, to the town net, to uh, which is the uh, community in the Rift Valley, to the uh, to the uh, Mount Kenya region, to the coast region, to the Maasai, all coming together in unison to celebrate the unique identity and showcase to the audience. It will be festive, uh, it will be engaging, and it always leaves an impact, especially to the future generation. The cultural day will be a family day. We are going to expect um, Nyama Choma. It's an outdoor event. For those ones that live in Western Australia, it's a place that we normally call Chomazon. We regularly attend that place on a Friday. This place is kids friendly, family friendly. We expect to have people selling their wares. Of course, people from sponsors from Kenya and we expect business owners from here as well to attend. During the forums, we will hear more from some of the Kenyans who have invested both in Australia and Kenya and who we have featured on this show before. Among them, Helen Maria, the director and founder of Options Education Agency that is helping young people who are looking for further education abroad. I moved from Kenya 22 years ago to go and live with my family in Australia. I went there as a professional accountant, but eight years down the line after working in the field of accounting, I found myself having so many students, so many children of friends and family and relatives whom I was assisting to go and further their studies abroad. And it's out of that that I approached a few universities and they agreed we worked together into opening doors and gates for our Kenyan students who are missing out on a lot of opportunities in Australia. And out of that, we started when not many people knew about Australia. Actually, a lot of parents used to take their children to UK, to Canada, to US especially. Australia, it was like you are talking another language. Hello, Alex, come in. Um. You may also remember Veronica Mumira, who runs a recruitment and staffing agency in Perth City. She went to Australia at the age of 20 as a nursing student, and now she is a proud investor 
having opened a training school in both Perth and Mombasa, known as Oskia International Training College. The college offers training in individual support and home caregiving. Veronica has also invested in the real estate. Oscare International College is a sister company of Oscare Group in Australia. Oscare Group was started in 2009. I'm the co-founder of Oscare Group and Oscare International College. So Oscare does uh, is a registered trading organization which we've brought that college into Kenya. We offer three individual support. Uh, the students will be looking after the elderly, the disability and community clients and the Diploma of Community Service is all about case management, working with different cohorts of clients from the prison system, disability clients, drug addicts, so it's all incorporating in that uh, group of people. In Adelaide, there is Emily Correr, the CEO of BET Group, which provides housing and support services for people living with disability. I am a disability inclusion consultant. I work with uh, the NDIS, which is the new way people in Australia receive services, people with disabilities. So that is National Disability Insurance Scheme, the NDIS. We have a business, me and my husband. We are building accessible housing for people with disabilities. These are purpose-built houses for people with disabilities. Yes, the Australia Daring Abroad Investment Forums are on another level amid increasing attention on the role of the diaspora in Kenya's socio-economic development. Let's take a short break. We have more in a moment. Welcome back as we continue to highlight what to expect in Australia as we host daring abroad investment forums from the first weekend of March this year in three cities, Perth, Adelaide, and Melbourne and representatives from Kenya will come from various sectors including the real estate, finance sector, health, education among others. The theme of these forums is investing home and abroad but before we proceed here are some tips about investing back home in the property sector powered by Centum Real Estate. <music> Investment tips with Centum Real Estate. Centum Real Estate. Real estate with real experience. Thank you so much and welcome to this segment. Uh, for record purposes, kindly tell us who you are and what you do. My name is Mildred uh, Mwebi. I'm a digital sales lead at Centum Real Estate. Thank you for having me. Now, Kenyans are very interested in investing in real estate, both those located in Kenya and those from the diaspora. So as you think about investing in property, what are the considerations that one needs to have from A to Z before diving headfirst? My first um, factor would be location. I think when someone is looking to invest in property in Kenya, Ideally, they should look at a good location that has growth potential. When I talk about location, I mean one should look at um, the accessibility of this property. If it's a house or it's land, it should have like proper road networks. Um, there should be infrastructure uh, in the location. So by infrastructure, I mean power, uh, availability of water, security as well. You want to live in a place that is secure, low crime rate, and then also proximity to amenities, um, shopping centers, schools, uh, hospitals, religious institutions, yeah, among other factors. Basically, it's because they determine the value of that property, not only when you're purchasing it, should you think of flipping it down in the market. So the other aspect uh, someone should look at, why are you getting this property? What's the reason you are acquiring the property? Are you getting it for yourself as your primary home, for your family, or are you buying for investment? If you're buying, let's say, the property for investment, you should look at the return on investment of that property. You should look at the capital appreciation of the property um, because this will determine um, the amount of capital you're willing to put in versus the amount of income you're going to get out of it. The third uh, would be budget. So we'll talk about the money. So here it's 
advisable for yourself to consider your financial situation at the time you're looking at investing the property. To avoid a situation where you take up a property that will become a financial burden on you. Investment tips with Centum Real Estate. Centum Real Estate. Real estate with real experience. Back to the Daring Abroad Investment Forums Australia chapter and one of the key highlights will be a panel discussion on education as a catalyst for investment. Given that many Kenyans have found their way to Australia through education opportunities, we will seek to understand what happens after. Education is a pathway to investment. One of the things is once you move to Australia on an education visa, it's a pathway also to finish your program and become one of the Australians who are playing very big role because obviously ignorance is a terrible thing. So once you finish your education, you are already now more enabled to understand the environment you are in. Because if you move from Kenya and maybe you have no clue of the country you are going to, chances are that you'll be lost before you understand where to start. Moving with education is one of the easiest because education actually gives you a chance to, it's, it blends you very well to the system, even to understanding the systems of Australia, even as a person has to, li to live there. So once you finish your education, a lot of those people who have heavily invested in Australia, one day they were students. I've seen this happening not just from Kenya, but even those from places like India, for example. I have met a lot of college owners. All these people came there as students. And before you know it, they're running their own show. As indicated earlier in the show, Veronica Mumira is an example of a Kenyan who went to Australia for studies. And now she's an investor both in Australia and Kenya. She has invested in the real estate and training sectors. She runs Oskia Group, a family-owned company based in Perth, with a sister company in Mombasa, Kenya, called Oskia International College. This is a one-stop shop offering solutions in training, job opportunities, and support for clans living with disability, as well as senior citizens. Veronica owns this magnificent building with modern apartments in Shanzu, Mombasa. Diaspora uh, clientele, um, expatriates, uh, foreigners who want to invest in, in Kenya, people who want to do business because it's a, it's a very ideal environment. So the investors can buy this and they can use it as an A and B. As Australia sets the pace for the 2024 Daring Abroad Investment Forums, the timing couldn't be better. We actually know that the leading source of foreign income and currency is actually diaspora remittances. And I think uh, as per the close of, uh, I think, uh, last year, we were going to around uh, 600 billion. So uh, this is a very big opportunity for us because we have quite a number of diasporans who are in Australia. So we want to see how we can professionally manage the remittances in terms of, uh, because we are the private sector, we can be able to guide uh, the diaspora in Australia on which areas they need to invest in. We're also taking professional investment banks, insurances, patient funds who can be able to guide the diaspora so that uh, the investments can be safe. And even in terms of diaspora remittance, I think this one is going to increase uh, the remittance uh, back home. One of the sectors where Kenyans in the diaspora are investing heavily is in the real estate sector. Pazurina Holiday Homes, one of the platinum sponsors on board, is keen to talk to Australia, so to speak, with one of its key projects being Diani Pazurina Golf Resort, a gated holiday home estate. Centum Real Estate, which is one of our gold sponsors, is known for large-scale master developments such as Two Rivers Development in Nairobi, Vipingo Development in Kilifi, and Pearl Marina in Entebbe, Uganda. For us, most of the uh, expect the one you covered, 
uh, it go very quietly and on. And now having uh, daring abroad and Champs Media working with us, we feel that it's going to give us, us a significant knowledge and market, uh, people to understand what we do. Publicity. Yeah, publicity as well. Uh, secondly, uh, most events we have been able not to be able to do three states because uh, people are willing, they only want to stay for two, one week and go back. So this is the first time again we are touching all the states and we believe the future we should also be able to do Sydney and Melbourne uh, all combined. Um, that's our mandate, it's only registered body that cover uh, the chamber in the whole of Australia and Kenya in terms of Kenya Australian Chamber of Commerce. For Kenyans living abroad, trust is something they keep talking about. Us as Kenyans living in, West, in Western Australia, and especially Australia, one of the things that we really want to do is to invest back home. Unfortunately, we lack the systems or the structures in place to make sure that our investment is protected. You know, most of us, we send money back home, send to relatives, uh, and that money goes nowhere. So maybe we are expecting the sponsors that come here, they can probably answer that question and help us have a way that we can invest, whether it's buying land, uh, real estate, or any other business. Because I know there's a lot of people here that are doing business or uh, working in industries, so they are keen to invest back home. So we are hoping this investment forum is an answer to that question. It's been a long time since the last visit by a government dele delegation to Australia. So we welcome, with open arms, this uh, delegation coming in the Daring Abroad uh, uh, series. You'll find that uh, the delegation that arrives here will find the diaspora community is growing. Uh, it's diverse uh, from all walks of life and it's active in every sector of the economy. And the importance uh, for this session will find uh, includes for the delegation from Kenya, uh, including the government, will be, they'll be able to hear directly from the diaspora residing in Australia. And uh, they'll be able to understand the opportunities and challenges presented here in Australia. Uh, for the diaspora, we will get to learn about investment opportunities in Kenya. And we'll also get to listen, understand, and provide feedback to the government on measures and policies that impact uh, with the diaspora community. And the desired outcomes should include uh, providing the government with clarity on how and where to invest in the diaspora support structure considering the growing importance of the diaspora in the Kenyan economy. In other words, the Kenyan community in Australia is urging the government and investors to go beyond looking at the diaspora just as a marketplace for quick sales. Both the investor and the government to perhaps realize that the diaspora is more than just a target market uh, to purchase real estate in Kenya, you know, the, the 50 by 100 plots, so to speak, you know. In diaspora, they will find a wealth of information, contacts, professionals, experience across numerous sectors uh, from go Australian government at all levels to subject matter experts in diverse industries. The diaspora is the gateway uh, for government and investors coming to Australia and any other part of the world. South Australia, they call it the festival state. We are much ready for you. The food here is nice. We have African delicacies and also the weather is much alike that of Kenya. So you will not need to change anything from what you're doing right now because it is the same weather that you will find here. We are in, at the end of summer and it is the best time to be in Australia. There you are, Australia is ready for us and we look forward to successful investment forums. Remember from Australia, we will be proceeding to the UK and Germany during the month of May and USA and Canada during the month of June. Many thanks to our partners for your support and remember sponsorship is still open. Get in touch with us. Always a pleasure having your company and on behalf of my entire team at Champs Media. Many thanks for watching and see you again next time.